Now then, in this series we're going to uh, talk about the Necronomicon Anunnaki Bible and how it effectively uh, relates to everyday life. So we need to kind of get a better handle of the uh, every man's perspective on this. So we're going to uh, interview um, a uh, military captain, a, um, a pop star, uh, a uh, nuclear physicist, um, a common everyday stoner. Uh, we'll just see what people's take is on this. Um, so, um, it would seem that the contemporary New Age community that is self-proclaimed as even pagan or neo-pagan too often misses the point of the era shift for they quickly replace one system for another, blatantly rebelling against one to just slam themselves into another. The divinity that once communicated regularly with the priests and sages of, of the ancient world left us with clues that have become reinterpreted today as either blatant fantasy or yet another mirror of Christianized divinity with mythological names. Have these beings ever visited or uh, made any promises to you or asked you to work with them? The more effective Ritualists and wizards of the current era have not succumbed to the same issues when discussing matters of gods and spirits. Oh God! <laughs> Consider these words by Aleister Crowley. My observation of the universe convinces me that there are beings of intelligence and power of a far higher quality than anything we can conceive of as human. Oh God, what a charade! <laughs> And that the one and only chance for mankind to advance as a whole oh God. <laughs> is for individuals to be able to make contact with these beings. Quite different than the average New Ager's perspective of the spirit world, discarnate ancestors, and other entities bound to a book of spells, the leading members of the movement have understood that it is the contact with these beings, these gatekeepers of our universe, which makes up the true and coveted magic of the ages. <laughs> Kenneth Grant offers that there have been oblique and guarded references to a grimoire containing instructions for establishing rapport with denizens of other worlds, other dimensions, other space. For years, it has seen that there's no exaggeration to say that many of today's creative occultists have been influenced not by the presences of the Necronomicon, but by its absence. <laughs> what has been described as physical stargates to some become interpreted as astral impressions to others. They are essentially accessed by consciousness, by the light body journeys and astral work conducted in self-honesty. Just so there has been no misunderstandings, I would like to recap on what we've learned today from our guest audience. Oh God! <laughs> well, I guess that's another topic in the bag.